Ever since the beginning of time, people have been fascinated with the idea of gods or aliens coming to Earth for a visit. Authors like George Orwell wrote books introducing spooky Martian invaders in books like his 1897 War of the World. It sparked public imagination, and in the 1938 radio broadcast of War of the Worlds, people actually believed that the Earth was being attacked. Even today, vast audiences are entertained by the planet Mars. Mars Fact Mars is the closest to Earth every two years. The travel time is 180 days. One Mars year is 687 Earth days, fourth planet from the Sun. The Valley Mertinana is the largest canyon in the solar system is on Mars. Named it after the god of war, two moons, Phoebus and Damius, 4,220 miles in diameter, 141.6 million miles from the sun. Humans have always wanted to live on Mars. Colonizing Mars would be extremely difficult but not impossible. Even though Mars is only half the size of Earth, it has more land area. Three quarters of the Earth is covered with water. The remaining land area is less than the total surface area of Mars. To construct a settlement on Mars that will allow humans to survive and thrive. Every human has a set of needs that needs to be addressed in order for it to survive. Water, food, shelter, power, and oxygen. Water. Water is one of the most important things that a human needs to survive. We will bring some water with us to get started, but because of the fact that water is extremely heavy, we can only bring a small amount. The rest we will have to make. The first way we can make water is to use compressed carbon dioxide in a liquid form and mix it with Martian rocks that are oxide rich. When these two react, pure water is released, which can be collected for use. Another byproduct of this procedure is, to, is nitrogen, which can be used as both a fuel and power source. The second way we can make water on Mars is to use the ice that is already there. Scientists have proven that there is dry ice on the south pole of Mars and water ice on the north pole of Mars. The way we would harvest it is to melt it. We would then filter it and collect it for use. Food. Everybody eats food. Some of us eat too much of it and some of us eat too little of it. But we all need food. When we go to Mars, we will need to take food with us because there is no natural food source there. We will take prepackaged food similar to MREs. They need to provide us with all their daily vitamins and minerals so we don't die of a disease like scurvy. Another way we can produce food on Mars is to grow it in greenhouses. We can save time and money by not relying on Earth shipments of food. It can also recycle our air and produce, a, and produce air without the need for, for electricity. Shelter. Our shelter on Mars would need to be strong and sturdy against both the forces on Mars as well as the ones from space. It would need to be strong enough that it wouldn't break during the windstorms that can reach as fast as several hundred miles per hour. It would also need to be able to deflect radiation and, de and debris that comes in from space. The first few months we could live on the shuttle that brought us there. For a permanent or long-term residence, we would live in pre-assembled units that were sent ahead of us before our arrival. They will need to be able to support us for years at a time. Another choice we have is to live underground. We can use explosive to, to create a hole that we can put our shelter in and then shovel the material back on top. This will be a more permanent residence, but it will be a more costly and time-consuming one. The shelter we use then could be lighter and far cheaper because the soil and rocks on top could provide extra protection. Power. Power will be extremely important on Mars because everything in the base will run on it. We will need lots of power to power the machines, such as communications, refrigeration, and life support. We will need to take advantage of every resource Mars has to offer. The first way we will produce electricity is through solar panels. When scientists first sent rovers powered by solar panels to Mars, they were afraid that the dust would coat the solar panels and cause them to malfunction, but the high winds blew them off. Because of the fact that Mars only receives about half the amount of sunlight Earth gets, it will most likely not be our main power source. Our second way to produce electricity is through wind turbines. This will be an excellent energy producer on Mars because winds are constantly blowing. Winds can reach speeds of hundreds of miles per hour. The wind turbines we are going to use will be extremely durable and long-lasting, as well as be on a strong foundation. This can be 
one of our main power producers. The third way we'll produce electricity is through a nuclear generator. This could last for an extremely long period of time as well as provide the most constant flow of electricity out of the three choices. Universities such as MIT, Harvard, as well as government and private research labs are designing far smaller and more portable nuclear generators that are fit for space. These would be perfect for Mars. These could become one of our main power sources. Another thing worth mentioning is exercise. Exercise will become an extremely large part of Martian life. As you spend time out in space, your bone density and muscle mass decrease until eventually it's gone. Exercise has been proven to combat this. Prototypes have recently been released that you can use to exercise on as well as produce electricity. These are becoming extremely big thing on Earth as generations become greener. These will have a valuable multi-purpose role on Mars. Oxygen Oxygen means nothing to most people. Most people take it for granted, this colorless and tasteless substance, because there's so much of it. On Mars, oxygen would be everything. Nothing could be accomplished without it. The first way we will make oxygen is through a process called electrolysis. Electrolysis is the process of splitting water and its atomic components, hydrogen and oxygen, using electricity. The way we would do this is to submerge positive and negative terminals into a container of water. Then we would pass an electric current through it. As it reacts, pure hydrogen bubbles will form on the negative terminal and pure oxygen bubbles will form in the positive terminal. They can then be collected for use. The second way we can, we can produce oxygen on Mars is to create a greenhouse. Any type of plant organism takes in human waste, carbon dioxide, and turns it into clean oxygen. Any plant that will grow on Mars will be exposed to forces no other plant has ever been exposed to before. Plants grown on Mars will need to have their genetic makeup altered with extremophile genes. Extremophiles are microbes that live in unenvi environments that would kill any other organisms. Environments like deep sea vents, geysers, or nuclear waste sites. These plants would still be plants, but they would be super plants, meaning they would be plants that can survive extreme conditions. Greenhouses would not only replenish air, but it would also clean it. Hey okay, guys, um, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I just wanted to leave you with a few more words. Oh, the, few, uh, the photo you just saw a few seconds ago was um, a picture of the garden on the ISS, or the International Space Station. So anyway, Mars travel is not impossible. It's just extremely difficult and expensive. That's why we have not really attempted it. We've sent rovers there, but we haven't really attempted it for ourselves. Now, in a few years, when we've developed vehicles or space shuttles that are far more fuel efficient and can get us there quicker, it will be more likely that we will plan a trip there. But up until then, well, we just keep planning. Thank you.